Welcome to Gorilla Shop. My name is Mike Morris. I am super stoked about this tutorial. I'm going to show you how to model a fidget spinner in Fusion 360. <laughs> No, you can get Fusion 360 for free. I'll talk more about this later. Today, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily make a 3D spinner in Fusion 360. This is a quick dive tutorial into Fusion 360 so that you can make something right after you download the app. Fusion 360 is a great app to create 3D models to then use on your CNC machine and 3D printer. So now is a good time to hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be making follow-up tutorials on how to 3D print and use your CNC machine. Now let's get to it. Fusion 360 is free for personal use, hobbyists, and students. I provided a direct link down below. Scroll down to find out all the things you can do for personal use. Click the Get Started button when you're ready. You might want to pause this video so you can go ahead and install the app. When you open up Fusion 360, it's going to look like this. Now, one of the first things you're going to want to check is uh, under Document Settings, this will probably be closed, so you'll want to open that up. And you'll want to look at the units. I'm going to go over here to the edit button. It's going to pop up this window over here. I like using inches because uh, my CNC machine is set up on inches and that's just my mindset. But if you want to change that to centimeters, millimeters, meters, even the feet, you can do that here. I'm going to leave mine on inches, but that can really bite you if you don't set that up early on. So it's already set up on inches, so I'm going to push cancel. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do. Um, I want to turn on the origins so make sure your origins is turned on so you can see it this little eyeball over here will turn things off and on okay so you want to make sure your origin is turned on and um, also I want to tell you about this home button up here it's a little home uh, if you ever get to where you're off uh, off kilter you're way under here or you're lost you're all zoomed out or whatever and it's all weird then you can push the home button and it'll automatically click it back into place like that. Also I want to tell you if you want to zoom around in 3D space uh, you'll hold your shift key and push the wheel on your mouse down and then you can move in the 3D space like this and I use that quite a bit. Okay now I'm gonna reset it back to home boom Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off on this uh, ground plane right here, and we're going to we're going to uh, we're going to create the basic shape of the M3 tranquilizer OG. So up here in the tools section, you're going to want to hit this is a sketch tool, create sketch. And the cool thing about it is when you hover over a tool, you get this explanation window, which is pretty cool. So we're going to click on the uh, sketch tool. And then it's going to ask us to click on a plane. So we want to make this on this ground plane. So I'm going to click on the ground plane. And then I'm going to go back up to create. I'm going to click the drop down. I'm going to go down to slot. And I am going to pick the overall slot. All right. And then it's asking me to select my first point. I'm not going to try to center it up right here because. Um, I wouldn't get it perfectly centered anyway. So I'm just going to go up here someplace and I'm going to click the first uh, point. And then I'm going to go to the right and you'll see the uh, the numbers up there in inches that's highlighted in green. We want our spinner to be 1.75 inches long. So we'll type in 1.75 and then we'll hit the tab key and then from there we can, oh I'm sorry, don't hit the tab key, hit the mouse key and then move your mouse up and then you'll get the width of it. So the width of the tranquilizer is 0.65. Once we get that we're just gonna hit the enter button. 
and there is our sketch shape. Now that is on a plane, that's not an object yet. And I'm gonna do the little fly around trick that I showed you, holding down the shift key, pushing the mouse wheel, and then moving my mouse, and you can see that that is just a plane, okay? So we need to extrude, extrude, extrude <laughs> that plane. So the hot key for extrude is the Q key. So you're gonna hit the Q key, and the reason why I use the Q key is because I use it all the time, and um, it's under it's, it's under modify if you want to look at it, uh, and then it says uh, I think it says pull instead of extrude, but just use the Q key. It's much easier, and then it's gonna ask you to select what you want to extrude. So we're gonna ex we're gonna select that, and then this little arrow. You can just start pulling it and you can see that it, it is ex, extruding. Gosh, why can't I say that word? So we want it to be the OG is 0.45 inches thick. So we're gonna type in 0.45 and hit enter. All right, it's already starting to look like a tranquilizer OG. Now we want to go ahead and center this object onto the middle of our plane. Um, this is important because when you go to export it to a CNC machine or a 3D printer, um, you're going to want your origin set right. So the way we do that is we go up to Modify, go down to Move. It's asking us to select the body that we want to move, so that's, that's the body and you want to make sure that the point to point is selected. I think it pops up with this one selected. Make sure you have point to point selected. Now it's asking you to select the the origin point that you want to move. We could select the top of this, but if we do, it's going to snap it underneath the floor with the top of it right there. So, we're going to do the fry uh, the I'm sorry, the fly around button, hold the shift key down push the mouse wheel and move your mouse up we're gonna select this bottom piece uh, which is right under here okay you just saw me zoom in I did that just by um, moving the the uh, mouse wheel up and down <clears throat> so you're just rolling it forward or rolling it back in and out okay so I'm gonna select this middle point right here that's selected now it's asking me to select the target point now that I'm all like disoriented right here I'm gonna go ahead and push this home button here and I'm going to zoom out or zoom out a little bit and and if you want to just move your viewpoint you just want to push the mouse uh, wheel uh, and not with the shift key so I'm just gonna push the mouse wheel and just move it this way so I can see it all right, so now it's asking me to select my target point, which is going to be right here in the middle. And you can see that blue line lets you know it's going to be moving from one place to the other. So I'm going to hit that, and boom, it moves it. I'm going to say OK, and then I'm going to hit that home key again, and voila, there we go. Let's, let's check our perspective here uh, under display settings, under window, under camera, and we have it at perspective. If you do it, sometimes it'll it'll start with orthographic, and you'll see it looks kind of weird. Things that are closer to you should be bigger, and this is kind of wonky looking. If it looks like that, and you want it to be a more of a natural perspective, then push the perspective key, and you'll get that. All right, very good. Uh, it's starting to starting to look a little better now. Um, so now let's put our uh, our bearing hole through there. The way we do that, go up to the sketch tool again, click on the face that we want to make this sketch, which is the top of this thing. It's going to automatically uh, move it around like this for us. It knows what we want to do. I'm going to go up to this uh, center diameter circle tool here, click on that, and it's going to ask us to, well it didn't ask us anything, but we want to put our center point right in the middle. Okay. Click on that one time and slide your mouse out. And now it's making the circle. And that's gonna be, bearings are a quarter of an inch, so 0.25 in diameter. And then we're gonna hit the enter button. 
All right, so we want to extrude that, extrude that, and I'm gonna push the shift and the mouse wheel and move it like this so we can see it better. We are wanting to extrude that down through the uh, spinner body. So we're gonna push the Q button and we're gonna hit that circle and as you can see when we go down it's making that hole now instead of just going all the way down and making that hole like that which would be fine we are going to fly around to the bottom and if you'll just select the bottom it'll automatically bring that hole all the way through to the bottom and then say okay <clears throat> let's go back to the cool view so now we need to make the uh, the button pad uh, inset little shelf area right here. <clears throat> so we're gonna hit the sketch tool again, select the top of the spinner, and uh, the center diameter circle key again, and select the middle and drag out. Now the uh, tranquilizer OG buttons are 0.75 inches in diameter so we're gonna make this hole <coughs> uh, no I'm sorry they're 0.74 so we're gonna make this hole 0.75 alright and then we'll hit enter okay now before we ex extrude this down we, we need to go we need to know how far down to go because we're going to bring this hole down and we're going to bring this hole up and the result will be an area in here that needs to be the uh, the height of a bearing okay so the way we figure that out is we know that the overall thickness of this spinner is 0.45 and we know that the height of a bearing is 0.187 inches so what we're gonna do is say 0.45 minus 0.187 divided by 2 equals 0.1315 so that's how far we want to go down right here hit the Q select what we want to move start to move it down and we can see it's a negative number so right here we want to put in one three one five and then hit enter so there we go the next thing we want to do is create this on the bottom side but instead of doing that whole thing over again we're I'm gonna show you how to just mirror this from one side to the other in order to mirror something you have to have a plane that's in the middle of of uh, what you want to of the two items you want or the one item you want to mirror to make two right now our plane is down here so if we mirror this it's gonna put it way down here so we need to copy and move this plane up to a place where it's gonna be right in the middle of this spinner and the reason that we need to do that is because if we if we do further designs on the top we can just mirror those down to the bottom instead of recreating everything so I'm going to show you how to move that plane. Go under Construct, and you say Plane Offset. And we are going to select the plane that we want to offset, which is this one right here on the bottom. And we are going to move it up half of the uh, distance of the height of the spinner, which is remember we said the spinner height was 0.45 divided by 2 is 0.225 so we're gonna move it up 0.225 alright so that's where our new plane is and you can kinda see it in there let me move it around a little bit you see you can see it as I move it that plane is right in the center of the spinner body <clears throat> okay so now we're gonna mirror this down there that's actually something that we're creating because we're creating a hole on the bottom so you go down to mirror under create mirror 
and uh, sometimes this is on bodies make sure it's on faces and then select the faces that we want to mirror and now it's going to ask us to select the plane now you can't select through the body but you can get down in there and select it like this or the way I like to do it is over here remember I showed you the eyeballs I like to just make the body disappear find that plane which is this one right here it's asking it's it wants me to actually hit this button that says select the plane so and you'll see it turn light blue select it then I'll turn the body back on so I can see the results it's it's showing me that that's what it's gonna cut out and then I'll say okay <clears throat> there we go it is looking like a tranquilizer OG already all right now let's add some chamfers that's gonna be a lot of hot spots there so let's do a chamfer it's under modify and you want to select the edges that you want to chamfer I'm not gonna mirror this because these edges are just so easy to select okay so right here it's asking you how much of a chamfer you want I'll show you what a tenth of an inch looks like so that looks more like the ER let's reduce that down to 05 and there we go that looks more like the tranquilizer OG hit OK and this right here is what this was the model that I uh, that I machined for the first spinner I ever machined on my own machine uh, it was a machine that I converted a manual mill to a CNC machine and um, this was the first thing I, I the first spinner I machined on it so later on I realized I needed to add some chamfers here on these edges and chamfers here some very very small ones and then later on I added a, f a chamfer here and a chamfer here um, so this is how you model something very simple in Fusion 360. It's not that hard. It looks a little intimidating with all of these other buttons up here. But once you get something modeled and you're ready to actually make it, you if you want to, uh, if you're using a CNC machine, you would go to manufacture and you would set up all your tools, your tool paths, and then you would export it as an NC file. Uh, G code and then you would upload that to whatever uh, machining software that you're using if you're using this for a 3d print um, you can go up to file here and then 3d print and this allows you to export this file as an STL I have a flash forge 3d printer and it uses the STL so I just export it out of here in STL and then I import it into the um, Flash Forge 3D software and go from there so that's this is this is all I'm going to show you today on this uh, I will most likely do some tutorials on the process of getting this out of here and into uh, some 3D uh, printing software and then actually 3D printing this and I'm definitely going to show you how to get it to a CNC machine so you can machine this and I'll get a lot further into tool paths and tools and things like that but that's the tutorial for today thank you so much for watching and don't forget please hit that subscribe button because I have an entire list of tutorials that I'm gonna to put together in the near future thank you for watching and joining me in gorilla shop